So this is Humber in a Box and uh, before I start I just want to show you the Oculus warnings that come up when using the Oculus. It, it can make some people uh, feel a bit nauseous like a travel sickness so if you do feel that please take the headset off and uh, stop the simulation. Now this just gives give you a chance to centre your smartphone into your Google Cardboard. Now Humber in a Box is emerging merged between Caesar Liz Flood the, actually a flood model that we use to model flooding and tidal flows in the Humber and the Unity gaming engine and this is what it looks like so it's got some nice 3D graphics that you can view all the elevations here are what we use in the model but they've been exaggerated 50 times just so you can pick out the change in elevation and the actual simulation is placed within this room which is made to look like a, an old museum so we've got some nice pictures up on the walls these could be replaced by information boards like instructions of how to use the simulation you can see when you move your head around with the oculus um, it changes your view of the room so here's some of the pictures we've got an old map of hull uh, some hull dock pictures uh, again just i can move my head around i can see different things uh, and then we go back to the simulation so this is just modeling the tides going in and out so now this is how it starts and if I press the reset button you'll see this will set the water to a starting level um, so this is just modeling data recorded from 2010 and we've got little way markers here which go from sperm point we've got Grimsby, Sunkine and they go through to Hull, uh, Hesel, Brough, Winteringham and Gull just to let people know where they are there's also a white line across the Humber Gap where the Humber Bridge is um, you can just see that there um, we can go around we can look so this is modelling the tide, so it's actually got the tides going in and out. So at the moment it's high tide at the mouth of the estuary and that water's just beginning to filter through past the Humber Gap into this area around South Ferriby in the Vale of Ancombe. And now it's low tide in the mouth, you can see that water's receded quite dramatically. Um, you see there on the writing this is the sea level change, I've just put this up by one metre. So all this is done for all the data coming in for that tide, I've raised all the values by one metre. So this is we predict this to be the equivalent of about a hundred years of sea level rise. Now normally when you see models of sea level rise um, they're, they're quite linear, they're quite basic and they're just based on the elevation of the land. The advantage of Humber in a Box and our model is that it takes into account the sea defences that are around the estuary. So actually a one metre sea level rise on those linear models looks very dramatic for the Humber, it's very low lying so it looks like a lot of the area would be underwater. But actually when you account for the flood defences that are there, most of that additional water will actually be kept in the estuary most of the time. Because if we get another storm surge like 2013, then that extra metre of water will make quite a lot of difference. And we just see it's now high tide. Most of the water is kept in the estuary. There's some flooding in the mouth of the estuary and some of the weaker defences. But generally it's okay. Now the what we can do with this model actually is you can put the sea level right up to 100 which is often what first things people do what I'm going to do here is I've just put it up to 10 meters so this is simulating a theoretical tsunami going down the, down the estuary this is not something we really need to worry about for example the, the last time we had waves of this sort of height hitting the UK would have been 8,000 years ago with the Sturega slide this was a, an underwater landslide off the coast of Norway which sent large waves going through the, uh, the North Sea. By the time it would have hit the Humber, sea levels would have been much lower back then. Um, it, it would only have been about a metre or two high. It wouldn't really have caused much damage. The last tsunami in, in the Humber, interestingly, was in 1931, when the largest ever earthquake in the UK, just off the Dogger Bank, was recorded, which was 6.1 on the Richter scale. Uh, geologists are going to hammer me now for using the Richter scale. It's a bit out of date. We don't use it anymore. But... And that, you know, this was the largest earthquake recorded in the UK, but this caused a wave half a metre high going down the estuary. Now, unless you're looking at the tidal gauges, you wouldn't really notice that happening. Um, so it's, it's really not something we need to worry about, but we can model it, and it's quite interesting to see what would happen. You see now the water is sort of flooded through, it's flooded Hull, flooded Grimsby. It's going down the Vale of Ancombe. And also it, it would continue down the Ouse and the Trent and would head towards York and it would head towards Scunthorpe. So finally what I want to show you is what would happen if we melted all the ice on the planet. So there's all the ice at the North Pole, 
all the ice at the South Pole, on the Greenland ice sheets, all the glaciers and all the snow. Now we wouldn't expect this to happen and if it was to happen it would take thousands if not tens of thousands of years. But we're going to model it as if it has happened in one go and we've added all that water in one go. So it's actually worth 74 meters of sea level rise. And you can just see that wall of water, this would be a vast wall of water as high as a skyscraper, would just surge down the estuary. You can see it going over the Lincolnshire walls there, just pouring through. Nothing would be able to stand in its way. It would completely change the nature of the Humber estuary. It would completely change the nature of the British Isles and the geography of the world as we know it. it the world would look a completely different place with 74 metres extra water, as you can imagine. So we can just see this wave. You can see these white light, the white dot dashes are in the in the model. They they represent when water enters a new pixel. So you can see as the wave advances, you'll see these white flashes. And you can just see the water gathering. And there'll be very few places, only a few odd hills. So this was Humber in a Box. Hopefully we'll see you at an event sometime soon. I hope you enjoyed.